welcome to hobbyking.com. Stuart here with a flight review on a brand new and limited edition model, this time from Kingcraft. This is the 1450mm Kingcraft Super Stim. Now, in case you weren't aware, what is Kingcraft? Kingcraft is, much like Durafly and Avios, it's one of our more premium brands under Hobby King, but it's specifically for Balsa ARFs. And whilst this is Balsa, it also has some composite in there as well, and we'll come on to that in a minute. Now, this is a limited edition model. There's only a limited in, uh, number that have been produced. So you really, if you like the Super Stearman and if you like Balsa and ARFs, you really want to try and get hold of this as soon as you can. There will be spare parts available for those uh, limited amount we, we have, though. Now, this is electric. You could convert it to nitro if you wanted. You'd need to put some work in to do that. And as an ARF, um, I'm going to say it's, it's definitely for the experienced uh, builders out there. There are certain areas that you need to pay attention to, but once you've got it assembled uh, and got it built and get it down the club, you'll be rewarded with a very, very sweet flying model. And not only that, it just looks fantastic. And we'll come on to some of those details right now. As I mentioned, it's not purely uh, balsa. There is quite a bit of composite in there as well. First of all, just, just look at the detail. Really, really stunning detail. All these tiny little screws in as a scale of position as we could get them. This cowl itself, this and this front part are all fiberglass. Uh, it's a composite of uh, a light ply structure and then fiberglass sheeting. So you can see me pressing there. This top decking, that's all fiberglass sheet and it's all pulled taut over the frame there. So it gives a really nice um, faux uh, metal sheeting or skin finish, uh, much like the full size would have had. And then if we go further along the rear, if I lift this up here, How's that looking? All this top decking here, this is all glass sheet as well. And this is all pre-installed for you. Now you can see the rear of it. You can start to see some of the detail I was talking about. This is the cockpit in here. And the uh, nice little feature I like here, the joystick here is actually part of the latch mechanism. I've got some uh, cutaway footage of this already so you can see the detail, but it is beautifully detailed. Really, really nicely built. And if we look inside, what you're seeing here is the main structure. This is where your battery goes. I'll come into that in a minute. And you've got your uh, rudder and elevator servos here, and then your receiver installed. Now, if we swing back around again, more of the details, I'm gonna turn it around. It's a good size 1450 millimeter. Um, for a biplane especially, it will fit in the car, pretty much assembled as you see it. Um, you've also got, if you come on the side here, you'll see this rigging wire and this, I'm actually, if you pull back a minute on the camera, I'm going to give you a little tip. Um, there is rigging wire supplied with this model, but it's uh, M2 threaded rod with clevises. Now they're great for push rods, but I, for myself, I didn't really like them for uh, what essentially is aesthetic uh, rigging. So what I went ahead and did, and now I think you can see that here if you come around to the side, this is just black elastic and I just put some hooks on there. Hopefully you guys are getting that and that acts for me very, very well as rigging. And if you pull back again now, you can see the effect of that. Now the rigging that's supplied, um, think of it as a free gift because you get lots of push rods for future models. Whereas in fact, in reality, it weighs around 150 grams. That's 150 grams of additional weight that you don't really need because it's not structural. So if you get one of these, my uh, real uh, only tip on modifying the model is to replace the aesthetic rigging with uh, elastic as you see here. This is um, just the type of get, uh, stuff you get from um, craft stores and the like. Um, back onto the model, it is 6S powered and have a look here. This is the 6S pack I'm running on. This is a 3500 6L uh, Rhino pack. That slides in very, very nicely in the forward of the fuselage. It comes with this uh, composite uh, tray and it's got a screw. You can see how this slides into the model and the battery itself, it just sticks on with Velcro. And then additionally, you can put a Velcro uh, strap around the battery. So it's quite a novel way to get the battery in, but it is very, very secure. It works very well. Now the hatch will go back on and we're gonna talk about electronics. Now in the front here, uh, I've actually got now a MTM motor that was made specifically for this model because it's got a reversed shaft and you will need that because this beautiful aluminum spinner that's included has a collet style adapter uh, on the back of it. So you will need a reversed shaft motor for this. But this is a, a 6S motor and uh, it works very, very well. Again, if you want details on this motor, there'll be a link underneath this video to that. Servo wise, I've got uh, 22 gram servos in the ailerons and a high powered 16 gram um, digital servo on both the rudder and the elevator. 
and then you need anything from a 60 to 80 amp speed controller. Now, it's not the cheapest out there for sure, but then you've got to look at all the different materials you've got in there, the amount of prefabrication that comes out of the box, and just how stunning it looks. Because if I take a step back and you take a step back, look how good it looks glistening in the light. You've got nice, uh, authentic looking undercarriage and beautiful finish. It's a good frame. It's not the lightest, but that actually helps give you a bit of inertia and it looks so, so good. So, enough of that. What we're going to do now, I'm going to take it out here behind us whilst the sun's still shining and give you a flight review of the Kingcraft 1450mm Super Stearman. So without further ado, I'm going to stop talking and we'll go over there and we'll fly. Okay, so the battery's in, we're pretty much ready to go. We're here at the local club, so there are some other planes flying, you'll have to ignore those. But this local club, like many across continental Europe and the rest of the world, is a grass strip. And, important thing to note, traditionally, uh, planes like this with pants, or spats as you might call them, do not coat very well on grass, but you'll see that actually it's not a problem at all with the Super Stearman. Handles it very well, and also the undercarriage is nice and rugged too. Uh, just a little note for you guys, C of G, if I flip this over, hopefully you guys can see it. C of G is here, which for your reference is approximately 105 millimeters from the leading edge of the top wing. It's important to note the top wing. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna taxi it around, get into wind, and then take it through its paces. This is a Aerostar 15.6 propeller on this. I think what I would probably do is try a 15.8 as well. Certainly the motor will take it, but you can see it's got uh, more than enough power for scale aerobatic maneuvers and uh, sports flying. So there is nothing left to say other than let's get on with the flight review. So I'm going to taxi around. You'll have to forgive us, the onboard camera isn't working, so my cameraman on the ground is just going to do a sterling job of uh, keeping it in frame so you guys can see it in this glorious sunshine. I will. I just want to correct myself, I said 1450 millimeters earlier in the video. Sorry, that was incorrect, it's 1400 millimeters. We did check it again. So on taxing, uh, typical with all tail draggers, I'm gonna be in high rates on the elevator to keep the uh, tail down and give me maximum authority on the ground. Just a note on the setup, uh, with this, uh, I've got a 60 amp controller and on this 15.6, I am getting uh, just under, uh, I think it's 48 or 49 amps and for around, uh, 11 and a half to 1200 watts. It's a pretty good power to weight ratio there. And you'll see the performance is, uh, it's certainly more than scale, it's adequate. I would try the 15.8 uh, if you had the opportunity to. So where's the wind now? Okay, there's the wind. Let's have a look at the model. I got it out there. Again, excuse the noise, we are at a club, but I am going to go straight into takeoff, hold in, in a little bit of up elevator on low rate and uh, let the towel start flying first, correct on rudder and then ease off on the elevator, slowly applying power, and away she goes. So, for reference, that is at half throttle climbing away there. And I'm gonna bring it round, just check my trims. It took off really, really nicely, as you can see. And even in this slightly overcast day, those colors are really popping nicely. That's cruising past on half throttle. And we go up into a stall turn and bring it round. You can see the climb there. Look at those colors on the top. That's the stall turn. How are we looking on camera? Good, good, good. Excellent. All right. That's full power for you. Very, very nice. If you're gonna roll quickly, that's low rate roll. I'll bring it around again. First, I just wanna do some cruising for you guys. So I'm at half throttle and I'm just gonna cruise around. This is actually my preferred style of flying. I like bringing it low, cruising, conserving uh, energy on the pack. And it's a Stearman after all, so it's not wildly uh, fast. But look at that, it looks really, really nice shape in the air. The colors are popping, here comes the sun. You can see the rigging wire just. And I'm gonna turn away from the sun. Really very, very nice. So before we get into some uh, mild aerobatics, let me just take it up, keep it up here, and I'm gonna show you the stall on this thing. Because it's uh, not the lightest model for its size, but the stall is pretty benign. So I'm gonna bring it around into wind. And now cut the power and go full up elevator. And it's gonna stop and then it's gonna stall. 
there we go perfect you could dead stick like that happily stall is pretty much nothing to worry about so i'm gonna bring it around now and go straight into a loop this is full power climbing up 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 ease off the elevator ease off the throttle bring it around lovely loop and then i'll go around i'm going to do a half roll over and then uh, come out of that one and then bring it past the field that's at half throttle very very nice How's that looking on camera? It's good. Okay. I'm using a little bit of rudder in the turn. The wind is uh, moderate, I'd say, probably around uh, 10 or so miles an hour, but it handles it really, really nicely. I'll do another loop now because it looks so good. Pulling up, 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 up. Those 16 gram servos, high torque servos, coping well with that. And I'll do another roll, this time in high rates, like so. Bags of roll there on high rates. Remember, this has got two uh, 22 gram servos and there's four ailerons in total on this. So I'll do another roll going this way, slow roll this time. And those colors look great going slow roll. Remember, you've got the checker on the bottom and then you've got the uh, sunburst on the top, very much like the full size that it represents. Do another cruise pass. That's just under a third throttle now. A little bit of wind. Very, very nice. And the great thing is, you can fly this in quite a tight space. Let me give you a little demonstration of that. You've got to kick in the rudder, you've got to use power in the turns. But I'm keeping this pretty much within the confines of the field. Just doing lazy figure of eights here. And it handles that really, really well. Let's go up again and we'll do a little bit of aerobatics for it. Take it up, take it up. And I'm just going to pop it around there. Just kind of playing with the sticks. I'll do another example of that here, gonna go up. That's the full power climb and just silly miss really. Comes out of that really, really nicely. And uh, let's try a little bit of inverted. Doesn't need much in the way of down when it's inverted. Uh, handles that really well, stays locked in. I'm reducing the power now and I'm gonna bring it around for an inverted pass. Here he comes, nice and steady. That's a half power now. Beautiful. And then I'm going to power out of that in the inverted state. Lovely. Let's see if I can get it into a spin now. I'm going to bring it, get, uh, take it up, get some height. How we're looking on camera, okay? Yeah, it's all good. All right. So I'm going to go into mid rates for this, just to give me a little more authority. Let's see if we can get this one to spin somehow. Okay. And Lovely, and then let go of the sticks. Didn't even apply power yet. Now I apply power. How was that on camera? That yeah, was good. You want another or was that okay? <laughs> try he, another one. I try another one, why not? He did it actually very, very well. Much better than I uh, even thought I could do myself. So this is good. It makes you look a much better pilot than you actually are because I am only an average pilot, keep in mind. And I'm not having any trouble with this one. Um, hopefully you can still see it up there. I've got a bit of height and take it up again and get a bit more height this time and then let's get it into a spin all good all good and basically just stall it in let go of the sticks and then ease on the elevator then give it power and i'll cruise on here a little bit of rudder in the turn there beautiful now this is a 3500 uh success and i'll check the uh give you a flight time uh check on that hopefully at the end if I've got my cell checker but I do get around uh, probably around seven or seven and a half minutes on this another roll slow roll lovely and I do another stall turn off the top there if you can see that nice bit of authority there we'll just do a little knife edge for you so I'm in mid rate for the uh, rudder a little bit of coupling just about manages it there. Does it quite nicely. You need quite a bit of coupling, but that's okay. All right, so I think I'm going to come in to land because I'm at my timer now. So with landing, you uh, don't want to be too shallow in your approach. Keep a bit of power on. There's quite a bit of drag with those two wings. So let's get it into wind and then fly it onto the ground. Ease off the power and a little bit of a bounce. So just flare. Flare, 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 and oh, just in the rough there. I probably it was a little bit short. 
but that's okay. So as I said, this is grass, and it's quite long grass. This is winter grass now. We are flying in the dead of winter, but it handled it no problem at all. So you don't need to be worried about the spats on this, and that undercarriage is very, very, very solid. Um, the only thing is I just overshot a little bit there, but that's okay because it's very well built, it's very sturdy, and it will take those knocks. Not that it was much of a knock anyway. I will get some smoother landings a little later on. So there it is. That is the Kingcraft Limited Edition Super Stearman. Uh, it's available in all warehouses now, and there is uh, some spare parts for it as well in all those regional warehouses. This is 1400 millimeters, not 1450, like I said at the beginning. This has the MTN reverse shaft uh, motor, linked to that underneath this uh, video, and that's flying now on a 15.6, and uh, you probably go up to a 15.8 quite happily on that. Flight times, while I got there on my timer, let's have a look, I'll just reset that. That was seven minutes on my timer, and I landed just with 10 seconds to spare, and I know there's a little bit more in the pack, so you get good flight times too. So to reiterate, it's a good size model, it transports, I've only got a small car and it transports in one piece for me, um, as it is. It does take uh, a little patience and experience to put together, but once it is together, you are rewarded with a, first of all, a gorgeous looking model, very, very nice, and a model that flies very well too, and will certainly turn heads down at the field. So check this out on hobbyking.com, again, full links below, there will be some reviews from some of our reviewers as well, check those out for an alternative take on this Kingcraft. Super Stearman. Thank you very much for watching and please like, uh, uh, comment and subscribe and follow us on our other social channels too and I'll see you for the next flight review of the next new model from Obby King. Bye!